Hey everyone, today we'll be making this cropped collared cardigan. I've made it in a size small, but it's adjustable for size and I show you how to do that in the video, as well as provide centimeter and inch measurements if you want to use a different weight yarn and a different size hook. It is one of my absolute favorites so far, I've already worn it a bunch and I think it's great because it can go between seasons. For this cardigan, I use just under 600 grams of medium weight yarn. I use the Abbey Road Kung Fu Cotton Yarn, a five millimeter hook, stitch markers, darning needle, scissors, measuring tape, and some buttons. I use four, but you can use as many as you like, and I show you how to do that. Here are the centimeter measurements for the final finished cardigan, in case you wanted to use that to check your sizes. Before we start, here is a picture of the shape that the front panel is going to be in case that helps you visualize while you're going along. So it's got a straight bit under the armpit, then we have some decreases, and then we also have some decreases further up for the neckline. Okay, so I'm going to grab my yarn and my 5mm hook, and I'm going to create a slip knot, insert my hook, and we're going to make a chain. This is how many chains you'll need to do depending on the size that you're making as well as the centimetre and inch measurements if you're using a different hook and yarn size to me. For me making a size small I'm going to be chaining up 30. Okay and now I've got my chain. This will be the chain length for both of the front panels. So now to start I'm going to be using lemon peel stitch and I'm going to start with a single crochet. You'll need to chain up one and using that extra chain to turn around, I'm going to do a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So I'm going to insert into that second chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through. So you have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through two. And now I'm going to do a double crochet. So yarn over, insert into that next chain from the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on the hook and yarn over, pull through the second two loops on the hook. Lemon peel stitch is just single crochets and double crochets alternating. So back to the single crochet, I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two and a double crochet again. So yarn over, insert into that next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. So now just go down the rest of the row, continuing the pattern of one single crochet followed by one double crochet alternating and keep doing that all the way until you get to the end. So I'm just doing my last couple of stitches and because I had an even number of chains, I'm ending on the opposite stitch to where I started. So I started with a single crochet and I'm ending with a double. If you had an odd number, you should be ending on the same. So if you start on the single, you should end on the single. And if that's not worked for you, then it probably means that you've skipped one or done one twice. So I would go back and check now before you do the next row and find the mistake. For this next row and for lemon peel stitch, we're going to do the opposite stitch into the stitch of the previous row. So into all of the double crochets, I'll do a single and into all the singles, I'll do a double. So because I ended on a double, that means that my first stitch of the next row is going to be a single, so I'm going to chain up one. If you ended on a single, then chain up two to start with your double. So I'm going to chain up one, turn around, and into that first stitch we're going through both loops, so both the one closest to your body and the one furthest away. I'm going to do a single crochet, so inserting through both loops, single. And now I'm going to yarn over and do a double into that single of the previous row. So then I've got another double there and I'm going to put a single and I've got a single, put a double. So you'll just be alternating between singles and doubles again, going all the way down. And for all of the subsequent rows after this, you're going to do the exact same thing. So you'll need to turn around when you get to the end and continue putting the opposite stitch into the stitch of the previous row. So you can continue doing this, following this stitch pattern until you get up to this number of rows or this many centimeter and inches if you're using the measurements. 
So once you have done as many rows in this section as you need to do, we're going to make a bit of room for an armhole now. So we're going to continue all back along this row, just like we've been doing for all the other rows, but we're going to stop before we get to the end. I'm going to mark out how many stitches I'm not going to stitch into with a marker, but you can just count as you go if you prefer. So for me making a size small, I'm going to count in five stitches and put a stitch marker into that fifth stitch. This is how many stitches you'll need to count depending on the size that you're making, as well as the centimeter and inches. Just continue along the rest of the row until you get up to that stitch marker. And I'm just doing my last stitch before the stitch marker. So now I'm gonna remove that stitch marker and into the next two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. So the next stitch that I would be doing into that stitch would be a double crochet. So I'm gonna start off like a regular double crochet by yarning over. If this next stitch that you need to do is a single, just go straight into it. So I'm gonna yarn over, insert, pull through. And then from there, whether you're doing the single crochet or the double, you're just gonna go straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all of the loops on the hook. So I have skipped these last three stitches for me. Uh, it'll be a different number depending on the size that you're making, but we're not going to be stitching into them at all. I'm just going to chain up and turn around. So now we're going to do a, another decrease straight away. So because I did that double for my first decrease, I'm going to do a single, but it really doesn't matter too much for the decreases, just as long as you get back into the proper pattern straight away with the next stitches. So I'm going to do a decrease into those two stitches. I'm going to make sure that my third stitch is a single crochet because we've got a double here. And then I'm going to continue on with the normal pattern. So I'm going to insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, and straight into the next stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through, and now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook. So now on that next stitch, I've got a double. So like I said, I'm going to do a single crochet into it and then repeat the pattern that we've been doing this whole time with the lemon peel stitch, alternating between the singles and the doubles. This side is going to stay completely straight. So you're going to go ahead and come back until you get back up to this end again and we're going to do a decrease into the last two stitches. Okay, so I've got two stitches remaining and I'm just going to do a decrease again. So this next stitch that I would be doing is a double, so I'm going to yarn over first, insert, yarn over, pull through, and now insert into that last stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all of the loops on the hook. So now just like before, I'm going to chain up one and I'm going to do another decrease straight away. So into that first stitch, I'm going to do my single decrease. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all of the loops on your hook. So now back to the regular pattern, I have to do a single crochet. So I'm going to put a single into that next stitch because there's a double in the previous row and then back to alternating between the doubles and the singles. So now we're not gonna do any more increases or decreases. That was our last decrease for the armhole section. If you're wanting to keep track, you'll have four rows in total in this section, and these are the centimeter and inch measurements. So you're just gonna continue going up, doing the regular pattern of the alternating lemon peel stitch with straight edges. So repeating what we did here, you're gonna keep going, until you have done this many rows or this many centimeter and inches. Okay, so once you have done your rows, we're going to do a bit of a decrease for the neckline. So to do this, you're going to need to count in some rows from the middle of your top. So this is the middle here and this is the armhole. So from the middle, we're gonna count this many stitches or this many centimeter and inches. For me making a size small, I'm going to count seven stitches across and put the stitch marker in the stitch after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the seventh stitch. So I'm gonna put a stitch marker into the eighth stitch and you'll put a stitch marker into the stitch after what was on the screen as well. So now I'm just going to follow 
the regular pattern until I get up to that stitch marker. But don't stitch into that stitch, we're actually going to do a decrease into the two stitches before it. Okay, so now I've almost made it to that stitch marker and everything everything over on this left side of the stitch marker here, we're going to leave completely free. We're not going to stitch into into the stitch with the stitch marker and the stitch before that, we're going to do a decrease. So if I'm counting from this side, it'd be stitches eight and nine, but it, it could be a different number for you. So my next stitch is a double. So I'm going to start off a double and do a decrease like we've done for all of those other stitches, making sure that my last stitch is into the stitch that has a stitch marker. And then I can take that stitch marker out. And now I'm going to chain up one and I'm gonna go back to the regular pattern and we're not doing any more decreases. So that was a double. So I'm gonna be doing a single into the top of that stitch and then continuing down the rest of the row like normal with no increases or decreases. We're not gonna be doing any more increases or decreases for these next few rows. So you're gonna go ahead for this many more rows, although that number that's on the screen is the total number of rows in this section. If you're following along with me and you've already done the row with the decrease and start of the next row, then the, both of those rows count. So including all of these short rows, that's how many rows you'll have. So keep going until you get to that point. And once you have done that last stitch in that section, you can chain up one and pull a tail and it should be looking a little something like this. You will need to make two of these panels. Both the left and the right front panel are identical. Here is a picture of the finished back panel before we start so you can get an idea of the shape we are going for. Same as the front panels, it just goes all the way across and it doesn't have decreases for the neckline. For the back panel, you're going to do exactly the same as what we did for the front panels except this time instead of the number of chains that you did for the front panel or the measurements, this is how many chains or centimetres and inches you'll need to do for your back panel. Exactly the same as we did for that first panel until you get up to your first section under the armpit the same as we did for the front panel. So for me making a size small that's 21 rows but this is how many rows it is for the other sizes as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. So once you get there we're going to do our underarm decreases which is much the same as the front panel but this time we're going to be doing it on both sides rather than just one side. So to do that when you get to the end of that row you're going to need to chain up one and turn around and we're going to do slip stitches into the first few stitches of this row. So for me making a size small I'm going to be doing slip stitches into the first three stitches but this is how many stitches you'll be doing the slip stitches into depending on your size and this as well as the measurements. For that, I'm going to insert through both of the loops, yarn over, pull through, and I'm gonna pull that first loop through the second loop. And we're gonna do that again, insert, yarn over, pull through, pulling that first loop through the second loop, and one more time into that third stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull that first loop through the second loop. Now we're gonna chain up one and go back to what our regular stitch pattern would be, but we're going to start our decreases as well. So that next stitch in the pattern for me oh, from the previous row is a single crochet, so I'm gonna be doing a double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, but now I'm going to insert straight into that next stitch for my decrease. So insert, yarn over, pull through. Now I'm going to yarn over, pull through the first three stitches and yarn over, pull through the last two stitches. So now we have got our decrease. So now I'm going to go down the rest of the row doing the regular pattern. So the double crochet is next because I have a single from the previous row and then I'll do my single and continue on with alternating between singles and doubles, just like normal. Join back in when you get close to the other end of this row and we're going to do some decreases over there as well. 
So I'm coming up on the end and to work out where we're going to put our decrease and what we're going to leave free, you'll need to leave the same number of stitches free that you did slip stitches into on the other end. So for me, that was a size small, but this is how many stitches you would have left free. So I'm not going to stitch into those last three, which means that my decrease needs to go into the two stitches prior to that. So once you've blocked off those stitches that you will not be stitching into, then you'll be doing the decrease into the last two stitches before that. So for me, that's stitches four and five before I get to the end, but it'll be a little bit different if you're making a different size. So now I've got my five stitches remaining and my next stitch that I have to do is a double. So I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna do the double decrease again. If you are up to a single and you're doing the single decrease, it's exactly the same. Just don't yarn over when you insert, but either way, because we're combining the two same stitches, it's not going to matter too much in the end. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and straight into that next stitch. Insert, yarn over, pull through. I'm going to yarn over, pull through the first three stitches, and yarn over, pull through the next two loops on the hook. And now, because that was a double, I'm going to do a chain up of one, turn around, and we're going to do another decrease. So I'm going to do a single decrease this time and I'm not going to yarn over, but it's exactly the same. I'm just going to insert, yarn over, pull through, straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. Now I'm going to go back to the regular stitch pattern. So in the previous row, I can see I've got a double crochet there. So I'm going to put a single crochet into the top of that and then alternate between the double crochets and the single crochets. So continue down the rest of this row and then when you get to the end, we're going to do the decreases again. So I'm coming up to that other end now and we're going to do our decreases and turn around, but we need to skip all of those stitches that we did slip stitches into in the last row as well as skip that chain that we did. So however many slip stitches you did, add one to that. So I did three slip stitches plus a chain. So we're gonna ignore those last four stitches. So these are my last two stitches of the previous row here now. So I'm just gonna do one more double crochet and then I'm going to do a decrease into those last two stitches, ignoring the ones with the slip stitch and the chain. So now I'm just going to do a decrease. So I'm going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through two, because I was up to a single, so I did a single decrease. And now I'm going to chain up two. I'm going to start with a double decrease because this is a single here. So I'm going to yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, straight into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So now I'm going to go back to my regular pattern and I'm up to a double crochet because the stitch from the previous row is a single and then continue with the pattern of single and double. Once you have finished this section, you'll have eight decreases in total, four at either end. I have done three at this end already and only two at this end. So you'll go up, you'll do two more decreases, one for the end of this row and one for the start of next row. Then join back in when you get back to this side and we're going to do one last decrease and then go straight up. Keep going with the regular stitch pattern and the decreases at the end until you've done four rows in this section. So I'm almost at the end and I've just got three stitches left. And into those last two stitches, I will do my last decrease. So I'm going to chain up two because my next stitch is going to be a double crochet. Turn around. So now I'm gonna go back to what we were doing before with no increases or decreases and just putting one stitch into every stitch of the previous row alternating between the single crochet and the double crochet from the previous row. So now continue on with this pattern until you have reached this many rows or this many centimeter and inches without doing any more decreases. 
I forgot to get a good shot of the finished back panel, but here it is with one of the front panels on top, but you can tell the shape of the arms and below the screen it's just straight. So now we are going to sew all of the panels together. I've already sewn one of my panels to my back panel, so we're going to do the other one. So right now this is facing in the right way, so we're actually going to need to turn it in the other way when we sew it together. So to sew the arm, I'm going to lift this over and we're going to sew it up like that. And then we'll sew the arm down as well over here. Using the tail from one of your panels, grab your darning needle. All I'm going to do is go through the stitches from both of the panels only until we get up to this point on the neckline and then we're going to stop and we're going to leave the rest of it free with the uh, the shorter rows. I'm going to do a mattress stitch but you can just go all the way through both panels in one go if you like but I'm going to go through the outside of the panel and up through the middle and then over to the other panel same thing through the back side up through the middle through the back up through the middle. I like the mattress stitch because you can pull it a bit tight whereas the other one it's difficult to adjust the tension but any kind of stitch that you prefer will work here. And I'm just doing my last stitch there and then if you want to secure it a bit you can do another stitch and pull the tail through. Okay, so that is the shoulder. And now making sure that it's still inside out, we're gonna go ahead and do under the armpit as well. It's essentially exactly the same as what we just did. We're just gonna be going into the ends of the rows instead. Once it's all stitched together, we're gonna get started on the collar. So for that, you'll need to grab some yarn and your hook again, using the same size hook. I'm going to join on to this, so this is facing in the correct way, so this is right sides out. We're going to join on to the front left collar and we're going to do stitches going around this way. So you want this to be the outside for now. So I'm just going to join on with my yarn. If you have a preferred way of joining on you can do that, otherwise I just like to make a slip knot. And pull it through that first stitch and then I'm going to do a chain up of one and now into that first stitch we're going to do a single crochet and into every other stitch I'm also going to put one single crochet so we're not doing the lemon peel stitch anymore we're just doing only single crochets so go ahead this bottom section That is all of the straight stitches from when we did it on the neckline. And now we're gonna be going into the ends of the rows. So for every two rows, you need to do three stitches. Every double crochet row, you'll do two single crochets and every single crochet row, you'll do one single crochet. But if it's easy to think about, just know that every two rows, you have to do three single crochets. So just find a spot for your hook to go. And into the next lot of two rows, I'll be doing another three stitches. So I've got one, two, and three. So just calculate how many stitches you will need to do, depending on how many rows you have, and make sure you do that many stitches before you get up to the join between the two panels. So there we go. And now we're gonna switch over to going into the back panel. And over here, we're just gonna put one single crochet into every stitch again, just like we did for the front panel. And we're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side of the collar. And then we're gonna turn around and come back, but every row after this row is gonna be a lot easier because we'll have stitches to go into. Now I've come up to this join again. And the most important thing is to mirror the other side. We don't want the collar to be uneven. So just make sure that you match whatever you did on the other side. 
And now going back into those stitches across the top, uh, which are the regular stitches again. So it'll be a bit easier. Okay, so once you've made it to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one, turn around, and we're going to do an increase straight away. So into that first stitch, I'm going to put one increase. So there's one single crochet and a second single crochet. And now I'm just going to put one single crochet into all of the other stitches. And you're just going to continue doing that all the way around until you get to the other side. And we're going to do another increase. The pattern from here is going to be to put one increase on every second row on either end. So this row will have an increase at the start and the end, and the next row will have no increases. The row after that will have an increase on the start and the end and so on until you have done as many rows as you need to do in this section. For all of the sizes, it's going to be this many rows or this many centimeters and inches. But if you like an extra wide collar or a more narrow collar, you can take or add as many rows as you want. If you wanna see the increase again, join back in when you get to the other end. Otherwise you can go ahead following that pattern. All right, and I've just got one stitch left in this row. So I'm gonna put an increase. So I'm gonna do one single crochet into that stitch and then straight away I'll do another single crochet and then we're gonna chain up one, turn around, and this row is gonna have no increases, so one single crochet into every stitch and do the increases on the next row. So every even numbered row will have the increases, every odd numbered row won't. Continue on until you've done as many rows as you need to do. Once you have finished with those rows, your collar should be looking something like this. So it's gonna have the edges at the front and then it's gonna flip over on the back. If the corners of your collar are curling up, you can just iron them down or block them to get them to be flat, but they also should flatten a little bit over time. Once you've finished your collar, we're going to do the trim for around the neckline. I've already done the other side, but we're going to do this side now. So what you'll have to do is go up to where your collar is and you're going to count three rows down from the top and pop in a stitch marker into that edge stitch. That's basically, we're gonna stitch all the way up to this point. If you wanted this to come up higher, you can just go all the way up to the top or you can do it a little bit lower. It just depends how high up your neck you wanna be able to button it. But I've done it three rows below where the collar starts just to give a little bit of extra room like that. So go ahead and put in that stitch marker and then I'm going to join on with my yarn down in the bottom corner Make a slip knot, insert my hook, and I'm going to go into that very bottom stitch over here, insert, and I'm going to yarn over, pull through, pull through the loop as well, and I'm going to chain up one, and then I'm going to go ahead and put a single crochet into that same spot where I just did a stitch. So you're gonna go all the way up the edge and it's gonna be the same thing that we did over on the collar. You're gonna to need to put three stitches for every two rows. So that's one row there. And I just have to do two more stitches before I get up to the third row. So it's essentially two singles into each double crochet and one single into each single crochet. So that's just the height of the stitches evens out to be three single crochets for every two rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in my stitches all the way up. It doesn't need to be in the exact same spot of each stitch going up, but try to keep it um, as even as you can, but it doesn't have to be exact. It'll still even itself out. And I'm coming up to my last stitch and take out that stitch marker. And there we go. So now we're going to chain up one and we are going to turn around and go all the way back down, but we are going to need to leave buttonholes. If you haven't tried your cardigan on yet, um, now is a good time to do that and work out where you want your buttons to go. I have four buttons, so I've worked them out spaced evenly. And if you want to copy what I did, 
I put a buttonhole for the third stitch from the top and then 15 stitches, 15 stitches and 15 stitches. But you can do as many or as little um, buttons as you want. So if you want to keep track of that, grab some stitch markers and pop them in for where you want your buttonholes to be. So, okay, so once you've marked out where your buttonholes need to be, we are going to turn around and I'm going to put one single crochet into every single crochet of the previous row. But when I come up to a buttonhole, instead of doing a stitch into where that stitch marker is, you're going to chain up one and you're going to skip that stitch entirely and go over to the next one. And then you're going to keep going with one single crochet into every stitch of the previous row until you get to your next stitch marker. So I'll show you the buttonhole again. And I'm back up to that next stitch marker. So I'm going to do a chain of one and skip that stitch entirely and go into the next stitch. And then that's it for this row. So you just keep going down the rest of the row, making buttonholes where you need to. If your buttons are bigger than mine, you also might need to leave a bigger hole. So if you do, just chain up two and skip two stitches instead of one or if you have really giant buttons you could chain up more than that you could chain up three but just make sure that you're skipping the same number of stitches that you're chaining and other than that the pattern will be the same and once you've made it to the end of that row we're going to chain up one and turn and now just go all the way back down this row putting one single crochet into every stitch of the previous row including into the chains that we did for the buttonhole so here is my, I've got my stitch marker in that previous row. Here is my first buttonhole and there's a chain there and I'm just going to go all the way through. So right in through the buttonhole and do a single crochet. And then your buttonhole will look like that. And then keep going all the way up to the other end of this row with one single crochet into every stitch. Once you've made it to the end of the row, then that's it. You can chain up one, pull a tail and weave that in. If you followed me, that'll be three total rows for this neckline trim, as well as this many centimeter and inches. If you're using a different size hook and yarn, you may need to do a different number of rows, but I would say try not to do less than three if you can. You'll also need to create your buttonholes in approximately the middle row. So if you end up doing five rows for this collar, try to put your buttonhole row in that third row in the middle so that the buttons will sit in the middle when they're done up. And once you have done that one with your buttonholes, you'll need to go ahead and do the other side. This is gonna be exactly the same as what we did here, except that you'll start up from this corner. So if I flip this around, you'll be starting up here for your three rows if you want these stitches to face the same way. If you don't mind, then you can start from the bottom. It'll just, it'll look like this rather than how it looks with both being the same. And you'll just do the exact same thing, three rows or this many centimeter and inches without doing any of the chains for the buttonholes and then we'll stitch the buttons on. Once you have finished with the trim, we can also do a little trim around the bottom just to neaten it up a little bit. So the same thing that I did with attaching the yarn here, I just made a slip knot and joined it on over in this other corner here. And then I did single crochets all the way around. So one into every stitch. This was the chain row here. So pretty much one into every other side of the chain. So it looks like this. And it just neatens up that bottom a little bit. If you wanted a thicker band, you could just add more rows to this section. So when you get to the end, chain one, turn around and just keep doing rows like we did for around the neckline. But I'm just going to have one row around the bottom when you get to the end of the bottom band just fasten off and weave in the end as well the last separate panels that we'll be making are the sleeves so here is the shape of the sleeves we've got it straight for the forearm some increases for the elbow straight again and then we'll also have some decreases for the top of the arm to start on the arm panels you'll just need to grab your hook and yarn and start with a slip knot. Insert your hook 
and we are going to do a chain. This is how long your chain will need to be depending on the size as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. And the number of chains on the screen will also include that first chain to turn around. Once you've got your chain, we're going to do the same thing that we did for the other panels and do our lemon peel stitch. So into that second chain from the hook, I'm going to do a single crochet. So inserting into that second chain, got our first stitch. Now into the next chain, I'm going to do a double crochet. So just like before, we're going to repeat alternating between a single crochet and a double crochet into all of the chains. So go down the rest of the row, alternating between those stitches until you get to the end. And then you're gonna go ahead and repeat the rows making sure to put the opposite stitch into the stitch of the previous row. So into all of the single crochets of this row, in the next row, you'll put a double crochet, just like we did for the other panel, until you have done this many rows or until this section of the panel measures this many centimeters and inches. So following the exact same stitch pattern as the other panel, continue on until you've done as many rows as you need to do. The length of the sleeves will be the same for all sizes. If you have particularly short or long arms and you want to adjust it, this section should measure approximately from the base of your wrist till halfway or two thirds of the way up until your elbow. Once you have finished those rows, you should have a rectangle like this. And now we're going to do some increases to give a little bit more room around the elbow. My last stitch of this previous row was a double crochet. So because I'm doing an increase, that means I'm gonna do another double crochet straight away. So I'm gonna chain up two, turn around. And if you had a single crochet as your last stitch, you would just chain up one and then do the same stitch that you have in the previous row. First into that stitch and then going into the same stitch, you're going to do the stitch that you actually should do. So that would be a single for me because it's a double here. And then that means you should be back on track with the regular pattern. So now I'm doing a double crochet into that next stitch, which in the previous row was a single. And now I'm back to a double. So I'm going to do a single. So join back in with the regular alternating pattern and keep going until you get to the other end. And then we're going to do another increase. So I've almost made it up to the other end and I just have two stitches free. So into that second last stitch, I'm just going to do my stitches normal. And then into the last stitch, you will put the next stitch in the sequence. So it's a single crochet and then back into that same stitch, you're gonna add one more stitch, which will also be continuing the sequence. So I'm gonna put a double crochet now. And now we're going to do no increases for the next row. So you would just continue with the regular sequence. So my last stitch was a double, gonna chain up one, turn around, and I'm gonna put one single into that and a double and continue doing that down the rest of the row. So we're going to be doing increases on every second row for this many rows or for this many centimeters and inches. So when I get to the end of this row, I won't be doing an increase, but then for the following row, I'll be doing an increase both at the start of the row and the end of the row. If you wanna see that again, join back in. Otherwise you can go ahead until you have finished as many rows as you need to do. So I have two stitches left and I'm just going to put one stitch into each of those in sequence. So there we go. So now we're going to do a, another increase. This is the third row in this section. So all of the odd rows will be the increase rows. So because I just did a single, that means that my first stitch of the increase is also gonna be a single. So I'm gonna chain up one. And if yours is a double, you just chain up two. So I'm gonna do one single into that first stitch. And then going back into the same stitch, I'm gonna put a double. So now just continue down the rest of the row and make sure that when you get to the other end, you put an increase in that side as well. So we'll put one more increase into that last stitch and then the following row will be no increases. 
You'll just need to keep doing this until you have done seven rows in this section or this many centimeters and inches. So once you've done that, should be looking a little something like this. And now we're gonna go back to doing the rows with no increases. Exactly the same as what we did at the base here. I can see that my last stitch was a single crochet. So the first stitch of the next row will be a double. So I'm gonna chain up two. And I'm just going to go back to the regular stitch pattern without doing any increases. Continue with this pattern of alternating single and double crochets with no increases. So just going straight up until you have done 19 rows or until it measures this many centimeters and inches. It's the same number of rows for all sizes, but if you were wanting to make it a bit shorter or longer, once you have finished this section, it will now need to go from the bottom of your wrist to under your armpit. So you can measure that as well if you prefer. So once you have finished those rows, it should be looking a little something like this. So skinnier at the wrist and a bit wider for our elbow and the top of our arm. Now what we're going to do is almost exactly the same as what we did for the back panel. We're going to skip some stitches on the side and then do some decreases. So you'll need to skip the same number of stitches that you did for the front and back panels. So this is how many stitches you will be slip stitching into for the different sizes as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. So for me making the size small, I'm going to do a slip stitch into the first three stitches. So just in through both loops, we're basically just trying to hide the stitches here until we get three stitches in. And now into those next two stitches, I'll do a decrease. So once you've done as many slip stitches as you need to do, you'll also do the decrease. So this first stitch here is a single crochet, which means that I will be doing I would be doing a double so I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to do the first half of a double and then I'm going to go straight into that next stitch over yarn over pull through and I'm going to pull through the first three stitches on the hook and now I'm going to pull through the last two so now that we skipped two stitches the next stitch is a single so I'm going to do a regular double crochet into that stitch and then continue with the regular pattern of single crochets into the doubles and vice versa. And you're going to keep going until you get close to the end. And we're going to skip the same number of stitches that we skipped over here with our slip stitches. So join back in for that part. Okay, so I have five stitches left. You'll need to leave the same number of stitches that you did slip stitches into on this side. So you'll need to leave this many number of stitches plus two. So we're gonna have the two stitches for our decrease and the three for me are gonna be left completely empty. So that next stitch there is a, is a double crochet. So my next stitch will be a single and I'm gonna do a decrease into the next two stitches. So I'm gonna go in through that first stitch, yarn over, pull through and straight into the next one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all of the loops on the hook. So now that one is counting as a single. So I'm gonna chain up two and I'm gonna do turn around and we're gonna put a decrease again straight away. I am just starting the decrease as what the next stitch would be, but it honestly, it won't matter if you do a decrease as a double or a single because it's variated anyway, it'll all work out. So whichever you prefer, I'm just gonna go with whatever the next stitch would be to make it easier. So another decrease, this one starting with a double. So I'm gonna yarn over first into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Now I'm going to yarn over, pull through the first three loops, yarn over, pull through the second two. So now I've skipped those two stitches, just like we did on the other side. My next one is a single, so I'm gonna put a double. And then I'm gonna continue with the regular pattern. Now what you're gonna do, we're gonna keep going with this, with this pattern and you're gonna put a decrease on both sides of every row. So when you get up to the other end, these are the three stitches that I skipped here and this was the decrease that I did. So I'm gonna do a decrease into these two stitches. I'm gonna turn around and completely skip those just like we did over here. So like the back panel, keep going until you have done 10 rows in this section or this many centimeter and inches. And again, if you're making the arm a little bit longer, this will need to reach from your under armpit to the top of your shoulder where your front and back panels will sit. So this is the last step of the arm. So once you've done those rows, 
the top of your arm should be looking like this. So we've just got the decreases going all the way up on both sides, making it a bit narrow at the top. And we're gonna attach this to our front and back panels. Okay, so now we need to stitch up the arm. So all we're gonna do is fold the arm in half, both sides are the same, so it doesn't matter which way you want. So now I'm going to grab some yarn and my darning needle, and I'm going to connect the bottoms of the panel together. Tie a knot. And now all you're gonna do is sew up the arm. You can sew all the way through both of the panels like this and around, um, which is probably the quickest way but it might make it a little bit more lumpy if you want it to be flatter. You can do the mattress stitch where you go in from the outside into the in inside, get them out of the way, and then come around to the other side and go from the outside to the inside. So I'm going to do that way, and I'm also running out of yarn, and this uses less yarn than going through both of the panels in the one motion. So go ahead and stitch all the way up here and until you get up to the underarm. Then I'll show you how to position it around the armhole and then we'll be done with the arms. Once you've finished stitching up the arm, you can flip it in the right way. Grab the rest of your cardigan and I'm going to line up the bottom where it was joined with where the underarm was joined between the front and the back panel. So grab a stitch marker and connect that to the underarm join. And then you'll also need to find the middle of this part that's at the top of the shoulder. So you can do that by counting it or you can just fold it in half. And I'm gonna grab another stitch marker put it in the top of where halfway is, and then put that where the join is for the top of the shoulder, so between the front and the back panels. So there we go. So now I'm going to flip the top over the top of the arm so that we're looking at it from the inside like this. So now you've got your sleeve inside of your arm and everything is lining up to face the right way. So if you have more stitch markers, you can put them around the outside to make sure that it's even. The armhole will be slightly bigger on the body of the vest than it is on the armhole. So it, you'll just need to kind of stretch it around evenly. It will be pretty close, but because it's a little bit um, misshapen, it'll be a little bit smaller. Okay, and now grab your needle again, and I'm going to continue stitching up the seam. So I'm going to keep going with the mattress stitch. You can do whichever stitch you prefer. And go all the way around the arm until you get over to the other side and then join it together so it's fully stitched on. To sew on the buttons, if you've sewn buttons under something else before, this process won't be any different. So you can just go ahead and do it your preferred method. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. I just cut a short-ish length of yarn. Um, you could also use embroidery thread if you prefer and inserting that into my needle. And I'm not going to worry about doing too many rounds with these because the thread is quite strong um, and I can just redo it if it falls off. I've marked where my buttonhole is compared with the other side so I've just counted how many stitches up my buttonhole is and I'm going to sew my button on to there. So I'm just going to come in through the back, grab my button. This needle is too big to go through the buttonhole unfortunately so I'm going to have to t take my needle off and back onto the needle. And now I'm just gonna go back in. It's pulled nice and tight. And now I'm just going to go through the back with an extra loop like that. And then I'm gonna tie and cut my yarn. So nothing too fancy. 
and before you cut off the yarn or tie it you could check that it's lined up with the buttonhole but if you counted the same number of stitches it should be in the same spot there are all of my buttons you can also go ahead and weave in your ends as well the very last thing to do is to put a trim around the end of the arm as well. So just like going around the base, we'll be going into the other side of the chain row just to neaten it up a little bit. So I'm going to create a slip knot, insert my hook, and attach on somewhere around where the join is, but it doesn't need to be exact because we're going to be going around in a circle anyway. So I pull that through, chain one, and I'm going to put one single crochet into every stitch around going through that chain row. I like to stitch over my ends to keep them out of the way, but you can just tuck them in later if you don't want to do that. But it does save you from having to do that step later on. Right, so go all the way around the wrist. All right, so I'm almost back at the start. If you want to, you can just keep going with the single crochets going around this way. Just join on to that first single crochet and keep going. But I would like this to look the same as the collar and the other trims where the rows have been going back and forward. So I'm gonna turn around now, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I'm gonna join on with to that first stitch of the round, yarn over, pull through, and do a slip stitch, pull through again. Now I'm gonna chain up one, and I'm gonna turn around. So now I'm not gonna stitch into that slip stitch that I just did. We're not gonna count that as a stitch, so I'm gonna go into the first single crochet over and put another single crochet. So now you're just going to keep going back and forward doing rows like this. So when you get to the end, do the same thing. Slip stitch into that stitch, chain up one and turn around. And just keep going until this section is as wide as you want it to be. You can do as many or as few rows as you like. But if you want for reference, I did this many rows and it ended up being this many centimeters and inches. This is what a cuff of five rows looks like and there's also the join in the back there where I've turned around to go the other way. Once you finish the cuff, that's the end of your cardigan. Thanks so much for watching. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below and I will try to get back to you. If you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell so you know when I post next time.